Hey, this week on Sling and Dirt TV, we got class warfare. Yeah, we got a, a, a interview with the Stapleton boys from Vail, Iowa. That's not Vail, Colorado, but Vail, Iowa, and there's no ski resort. We have the all too familiar tech tip. And we have an awesome fan of the week. And of course, Songer says. says. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Everybody, welcome back to Sling and Dirt TV. That's right, I'm Buddy Ray, and we got the world's slowest B moderator here, Jack Prawl. Oh, hey, Jack. Hey, hey. how are you, Mr. Place Behind Me, a few weeks ago? Yeah, here a couple weeks ago. You know, we, we do have a Team Bud, Team Jack challenge. Uh, you have to pick a team captain, Team Jack, Team Bud, uh, and you have to Tell us how many points you think your team captain is going to accrue in the ID Weekly NASCAR series. I think there's like 15 nights or something like that. Uh, for those that pick Team Jack or Team Bud, you say, you know, Team Jack, 700 points. The person that comes the closest without going over uh, the number of points that they think their team captain will win, will win 10 free races to Joe's Carding and you can hang out with Jack and I. Yep, you get your so own race with us. You get your own race with us after the we'll both beat Buddy, so it won't matter. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, you know, here a couple weeks ago, we're on the track for the first time at IED Speedway, and yes, I'm not going to lie, Team Jack is one up on me. So, that ain't going to last too long. Uh, I tell you what, though, it, it was great to be on the track uh, at IED Speedway. And here in the last couple weeks, I've had some people bring it to my attention, and, and we've talked about sure. this. Is there too many classes in racing, you think? We kind of bounced this off each other before. I think there's too many classes, but when you have two different sanctioning bodies that are the large sanctioning bodies, mm -hmm. not even counting the sprint car sanctioning bodies, just the normal oh, IMCA NASCAR, they have to differentiate themselves, even though they follow almost the same rules, but they always differentiate them just a little bit, and then they have different classes. And yeah, there's some of those classes like the, you know, Osceola where they run the trucks. Now, how fun would it be to run a truck on dirt, I, you know? The micro sprints, you know, right. you see all kinds of, you know, you say stock car, one says hobby stock, you know? What's the difference? You know, right. You know, it's like that. Clark County Speedway with their uh, with their pickups, those pickups look like the funnest class. Oh, you, I would do that I, I, me. I ran one one time. I ran their little uh, number five truck and it was, I was telling, and in fact, I think I told you that the day after I ran that truck there at Clark County, it was probably the funnest racing vehicle I've ever driven. It had a lot of side bite. It was a dry slick track. It did not handle anything like what I thought it was going to handle. I was like, I want to do this again, and they're like, No, 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 no. You need to park. The well, truck. it's like, and the other thing is, is, is like sport compacts. You know, they've limited the cars or the type of technology that those guys can use, but yeah. how fun would it be to see a six-cylinder class where... Now, well, there's been know, a couple trucks that have ran the six-cylinders, but you didn't see the car count, and that... I'm gonna kind of go into that car count versus the number of classes. There's a couple trucks that run seven classes in one night. Sure. You know, in, in today's economy, today's economy is no nothing like what it was back in the 80s and 90s. When I started racing in the 90s, we had late models, mods, sprint cars, and maybe a fender body class, a bomber or a pier stock or a sure. Friday night flyer. But anymore, I bet you if you and I or the viewers at home, if you were to think about it and you wrote down every specific class in circle track race, I bet you you'd come up with 30 of them. At least. At least. Yeah. So we have an economy that's down. There's a lot more, you know, hollering for your dollar, entertainment value. And so when we already have a, a certain population base to pull drivers and fans from when we just start adding classes you start in my opinion I think you start seeing some of the numbers in the stands go down yeah but the one thing you if you really really look at it is you'll see is that the classes that they keep creating are the lower classes that that's what they have that's what they run you know most tracks you're gonna get your you know pretty much a stable feed of hobby stocks sport mods, yep. mods, late models, sprint cars. You know, those are the five classes that have, have kind of carried dirt track racing forever. Now when you Absolutely. throw in sport compacts and trucks and micro sprints and well, whatever, you know, 
all that stuff. It's lower class and it's what can you afford to run. And Well, this would be cool, so you get six of them out there. You know. Well, the problem is when you get six classes out there, how many times have you and I, over the course of the last few years, heard people tell us, well, the races are going too long? Yes. Or being yes. as, as drivers ourselves, how many times do we have to wait till the end of the night to get our paycheck from the tracks, but we have to sit through five more features? Yeah. You know, and I agree the next with that. thing, you, yeah, the next thing you know, we're, we're sitting there till midnight, one o'clock. But uh, in my experience, when I've gone to all these tracks and we just start adding classes, consistently add classes, I'm like, oh my lord, if people are already complaining about the, the race is getting over too late at night, why are we adding classes and, and adding time to the and, night? And that's very true, and you have a valid point with that adding, you know, seven classes versus, you know, having five or whatever. It does take a long yeah. time to run, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter just because there's seven cars, there's still cautions and... You now, know. there's some tracks now, Eagle Raceway, um, I think they're probably one of the best out there at running a timely show. I don't know how many times we've seen races, you know, start at 6.30, 7 o'clock and we're done by 10.30, 11 o'clock and they're running five classes. With a huge car count. With, with a huge car count, you know, 150 plus cars on a weekly show. With that being said, I think a perfect car count for a track is four to five classes. That's it. You don't need nothing more. No. You know, four or five classes. And when it gets to be 95 degrees out there in the middle of July and August, like, you know, this year they're saying it's going to be really hot. So it's 95 degrees out there. Do you want to sit on a wooden bench or a metal bench and, you know, sit through seven classes of cars? I don't know. The other thing I'm seeing with the addition of all these classes, to me, a modified is a modified. A late model is a late model. But when you take a late model and all of a sudden you make 15 different varieties of a late yeah. model and you're in the you're the fan sitting in the stands how do you tell which is what hell half the time i can't tell which one's what or what they're running you know half the time you don't know which way you're going around the track although i i i i, I went around so at least kind of, one more time than you did That's yeah all a couple more times <laughs> than me you know we like to hear your guys's opinion do you think the tracks are you know having too many classes do you think uh having too many classes is hurting the sport. We've already said that in, in a lot of ways there's too many race tracks around here. Uh, you know, now we're talking, is there too many classes around here? You know, look us up on Facebook. Uh, the video's coming out today. Uh, you know, we want to know which, from the opinion, or the fans' opinion, well, I can't talk today. Uh, I want to hear from the fans' opinion and maybe some of you drivers. Is there too many classes? What can the, uh, the tracks do? So give us your insights. Tell you what, we're gonna be right back. We're gonna to go to a sponsor break and we'll see what we're gonna do then. Hi, my name is Mike Stapleton, driver of the number 10, INCA Street Stock. You're watching Sling and Dirt. Tell you what, we're gonna go to Vail, Iowa. Now, in Vail, Iowa, they have a staple of racing. The Stapleton Brothers, you get it? Staple yeah. racing, Stapleton Brothers. Man, I'm You're cool. so funny. I'm telling you. So I tell you what, without further ado, here's the Stapleton Brothers. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sling and Dirt TV. I've got one hell of a uh, interview going on. You notice three cars, three drivers. You've got two sons and a father. It's the Stapleton family out of uh, Bell, Iowa. Bell, Iowa is just a little town just east of Denison off of Highway 30. Uh, beautiful shop, great family. Um, let's get right to it. Uh, Mike, you've been driving the stock car here for two, two and a half years. Um, Alec, you've been in the seven car there and, and Corey, you're over here in, in, in the eight car. Are you as fast as him? I beat him last week. Wow. Malfunctions. <laughs> Malfunctions. <laughs> New motor. <laughs> <laughs> Bad parts going. It's gonna be going good this week. You notice he ever sounds like Danica Patrick? It's all <laughs> malfunctions. You know, new motor, new this. No, I'm just joking. Uh, Mike, you used to race these, you know, 14 years ago. You took some time off. You got the boys in the sport compacts. Uh, I wouldn't consider them a rookie. Uh, you, you know, you raced six, seven times last year. 
why the time hop and all of a sudden you're right back into it, you know, this last two years? Um, I took a, a night job to uh, support the family. Um, I had an opportunity to make more money, um, so I took the job. Um, I finally got to go to Dave's. Me and a uh, uh, partner, one of my sponsors, uh, BJR Farms, Brian Rank, he says, uh, hey, you know, we've been talking while we were on nights about getting a race car together. We're both on days. Let's get a car together. And I says, is that us? And he says, yeah, us. Well, you know, we'll, we'll split the cost and do what we got to do to get you out there. I said, okay. So, so you know, what was it like uh, watching your dad get back into racing? I thought it was really fun. I always, I was actually really anxious for him to get going because every weekend, Friday and Saturday, we always go to the races wherever they were racing at. If it rained out in Harlem, we'd fly over to Boone quick and go watch races. So, you know, it's kind of funny you're talking about mentioning Boone. Uh, you know, we had a sound malfunction earlier, so we had to restart the interview. But with that being said, talk to us about, you know, Alec here wanting to do a, a Kara Web rollover, uh, destroying a car, and, you know, you guys went, tell us that story again. <laughs> Well, uh, we was at Denison and a uh, car in front of him spun out and uh, he was trying to spin sideways, hit that car, was facing the wrong direction on the track and somebody else come in and just followed him right in the front. So we uh, brought the car home right away after the races were over, um, pushed my car off the side, brought another car in, we gutted one car, gutted this car, made another race car, uh, Went to bed at like 8.30 in the morning, got back up at 10. We were ready to go to Harlan at 5.30, and they ran out. So we're like, man, we just busted our tail, and now there's no races. What the yeah, heck, yeah. you know? And it's like, they only got a little bit of rain down there, but they canceled. And we're like, now what? Uh, Dusty O'Brien, one of the Alex sponsors, uh, says, hey, let's go to Sioux City. So I called Sioux City, you guys are racing yet? They said, yeah, we're racing. I'll after 45 minutes. So we loaded up the trailer, <laughs> flew as fast as we could. We got there, he signed in, we pushed the car off, he jumped in, hot lapped it. So you're over here laughing, of course. <laughs> but how much of a help were you in getting that car ready to go? I wasn't here for that one. Why not? I got a text message at 4 30 in the morning saying thanks for the help. I didn't know they were gonna work on it that day. That, that's what you call team love right there. <laughs> well, <when> you <laughs> the points for the rookie year, you gotta get out there and Try to win as much races or consistent see. Well, you know, you're talking about Rookie of the Year. Uh, let, let's talk about that. You know, Mike, you're in the stock car. Uh, you guys are in your sport compacts. Uh, how do you define success as a team, you know, individually and together? As long as we can all put the cars on the trailer for the night and we all had fun. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. I mean, what is nine? Don't get me wrong. You know, my, my first year back, back uh, full time, we had three future wins that year, and I was on top of the world. Next year, we buy a new car. We're gonna get go to Beach Body Used one to start with. Bought a brand new car, had high expectations, and we did get a single win. You know, we finished the top four a few times. I think we finished fifth in Point in Denison, I think third in Harlan. I mean, it was. It was an okay year, but after having three feature wins the year before and not even getting you know, a first the next year, it was kind of disheartening. Kind of humbling in, in some ways. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you work so hard, you spend a lot of money to get a whole new car going, you think you got something better than you had before, and because of uh, some technical difficulties with the engineering of the car, I did <laughs> find out until later in the year. Um, and that was thanks to Mike Nichols. Um, he uh, said, bring the car down. He said, the car's fast during the heat races. Yeah, I can't catch you, you know. He says, you're hardest to catch, you know, the heat races. He said, but the features, the car just doesn't work. But when, when the track dried out, it wouldn't go anywhere. Well, that was a very stupid thing that we found out. <laughs> and that the rear end was jimmed wrong. It was two inches off. Two inches? Two inches. We never checked wheelbase. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I never thought that they was designed to. So racers, check wheelbase on your cars. You just heard it from this guy right here. But, you know, when you came back two and a half years ago, you had these two young bucks with you. Uh, how much help were they when you decided to come back two years ago? Oh, they were a lot of help. I mean, 
Um, Alec, he'd always take care of the nuts and bolts, and Corey was the tire man. How good of a tire man is Corey? He's a pretty good tire guy. You got any tire doping secrets for me? Not doping. A lot of this is like it. A lot of it's, it's all on the side. So. Tire no doping going on here. <laughs> Experimenting so. with tire pressure and sight design. And just yeah. angles and stuff. And now, Alec, you actually got to drive this. <laughs> yeah. What do you think when you got to drive that car versus uh, your sport compact? First thing I thought was, don't wreck it and dad's gonna kill me. <laughs> 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 and try going fast for each, each lap. See how good action you can do. Yeah. Other than that, uh, try to have fun. And experiment maybe later on, I'll get hobby stock. And upgrade from sport compact to hobby stock. Mike, what were you like when Alec was driving this? Uh, two cigarettes just about. <laughs> I was nervous. But you know what? But it's, it's weird, you know, because you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Then it's like, yeah, go, go, get it, now get it, get it. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. but each lap he picked up speed, you know, and he, he progressed and progressed and progressed. And uh, I was actually pretty proud of him because he did a good job. He didn't wreck it. <laughs> he didn't wreck it. Uh, with that being said, Alan, do you have a time frame as to when you might want to move up to a hobby stock or even battle your dad in the stock car class? When I get more money. When you get more money. <laughs> How about you? Same. Same. More money. More sponsorship. Yeah. That, that, that'd be nice. You know, uh, back to you, Mike. You're racing the stock car class 14 years ago. You come back two, two and a half years ago into the stock cars. Did you find that the cars had changed quite a bit? The technology changed quite a bit? A lot of the theory <laughs> changed quite a bit? Yeah, it was all a whole different ballgame. I mean, we ran a, a Mopar with uh, leaf springs and uh, torsion bars, 72 challenges. You're really dating yourself here all of a sudden. <laughs> with a big block. I'm only 45 years old. Oh, I was 46. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, my dad, he, he'd always run Mopars, uh, he, and he'd always had somebody else drive for him, you know, and I always gone to the races, and uh, finally it was my turn to step in the seat. And, I had a ball. I mean, I had a ball. It was really hard when I went to that night job to give up racing, but um, financially, it turned out right. Yeah. You know, it, I've always told everybody if you're patient, good things will come to those that way. You were patient, you waited, you raised, you know, two good kids here, uh, you're back in stock car class. You gotta be having the time of your life as a father right now. You come home, you got three race cars here, uh, unless Alec roll one and then your pocketbook's going to change chain and you're like thank god for that night job <laughs> well, with that being said uh what's your long-term goals do, do you want to say this type cars do you yeah. want to go to a modified no I go to that, I go to my life. just out of curiosity being a modified driver myself or a b mod sport mod why why do you want to stay in the stock cars just go to the races and watch the races <laughs> I, I will tell you I, I love my B mod, my sport mod, depending on what section you're, you're talking about. Uh, but the stock cars, you guys put on one hell of a show. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter what name's in the race. You guys are fender to fender, side by side. You guys put on some incredibly clean races. I mean, I, I told a lot of people, if you ever want to watch, you know, NASCAR on dirt, this is about the closest thing you can get right here. The stock car guys, for those of you that, you know, I know we've got some fans over in England, Australia, New Zealand. The United States uh, has several different sanctionings. IMCA has what they call an IMCA stock car class. Um, you, you've got to, let's be honest, you got to have some big balls in the stock car class. You've got good motors, you got to be very smooth. Uh, and just like any other class, you guys have some squabbles here and there, but you guys have a tremendous amount of respect for each other in this class. Okay. And it shows, I mean, you're, well, not that every, not that any one particular class or sanction has a lot of disrespect, but I've always noticed that when I've gone to all the, all the racetracks, the stock cars just put on a hell of a show. You know, if you guys ever come over stateside, or for those of you that haven't been to an INC uh, racetrack, watch the INC stock cars. Look for a track that's got the INC stock cars, you're going to see an ama amazing, amazing race. Um, with that being said, you know, Alec, Corey, you guys in the Sport Compacts, uh, one of my favorite tracks personally, but you know, I, I grew up there, was Eagle Raceway. 
uh, we'll see 50, 60 sport compacts and only 20 make the feature. It's like it Super is like Super Nationals <laughs> weekly for a sport compact, you know, and even you guys, you know, these cars aren't expensive as the IMC stock cars, but you guys even put on a hell of a race. Uh, there, there's really no class that doesn't put on a hell of a race. There's no. great competition in every class out there. Uh, but with you guys, I mean, ideally, if you had the money, is there a class that you guys would like to, you know, grow into? Stop, sorry. You follow dad's footsteps? Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to ask you the almighty <laughs> question. Alec and Corey, five or ten years from now, they're in a stock market. Can you beat them? Sure. Wow. <laughs> I give him a run for money. Even on PlayStation, we always beat him. That's not taking me out all the time. It's real easy when you ain't going to pay for it. Yeah. They just take you out. <laughs> um, do you guys see yourselves having, you know, you guys are young. What are you, 16, 17? I'm um, 19. 19? How old are you? Almost 25. Really? Mm -hmm. God, you look like you're easy. 17 or 18. I just got a haircut today. Easy. Oh. So, you know, 10, 15 years from now, though, you guys see yourself still being involved in dirt track racing? Oh, yeah. I'd like to be. Okay. How about you, Mike? I mean, you're only, what, 25? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Almost 46. But, yeah. Ten I years, hope so. 10 years from now, I mean. I hope so. Okay, if, if I'm not driving, I'll probably be banking these two, probably. <laughs> there you go. Have you actually, as a father, though, looked way farther down the road and say, okay, you know that day's coming when, when you're going to be hanging up the helmet. Every racer goes through it. Have you thought about that day when you're just going to retire from racing and just watch these two continue to race? Has that ever crossed your mind? Last year. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, so, last year. <laughs> so was there a specific incident that, that... No, just it was just the fact that my expectations for myself being better than the year before having the new car and it didn't happen. Right. Know, um, it was it was actually disheartening in a way because you know I figured we'd be doing a lot better last year. You know, three wins one year. Not saying that I was hoping to get the wins, but just consistent top four finishes and, and um, if the track was dry at all, I struggled because the car just didn't work. You know, and we these guys have helped. We come home. I mean, we put a whole new setup under the car trying to figure it out, you know, why, what was wrong, you know, on the phone, talking to people, you know, Mike Nichols, he, he had me bring his car, my car down to his shop, and we put it on a scale, and at least we were up to like 11, 1130 at his house, you know, and he was trying to help me, and it didn't help, you know, I mean, getting in the corner, it helped, but getting off the corner, it was still the same, it didn't matter what setup I threw at the car, the end result was still the same. Car would get in, but it would not come off the corner. It just let the tires up, right rear hotter than heck, let our left rear cold, you know. And it was disheartening because no matter what we did, it didn't make a difference in the car. Yeah, because we went from what, 60 pounds of bike to 300 pounds of bike, and still nothing. 300 <laughs> pounds of we bike. Tried every <laughs> night. We tried it. The one night we just said, we're going to throw the kitchen sink at it, and we did. I just loaded a ton of lead on the car trying to get it, you know. And that night, the left front came off the ground about two foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it still didn't go anywhere, you know. With your dad having the wind and being top fours and top fives, and you see your your dad's success, does that ever put a little bit of extra pressure on your guys' shoulders? Even though you're still in the sport compacts, but you're like, what, am I ever doing good enough? Am I last, doing year, last year for me, for my rookie year. Well, I ended up getting my first win last year and I ended up getting the hill all the same night. So, but other than that, consistent top fours almost every week. And then ended up getting second points points in Denison because I told the car and that lost me the lost me the trap champion. You lost by what? Two points? Yeah, it wasn't very much. That's not, that's that's seven. 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 You, notice was, the, you notice the older brothers calling out the younger brother by two points? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it was close. Well, what about they the last point race on this? Well, what about we ran out four times. Yeah. Do, do you ever feel a little extra pressure? I mean, you're you're older than him. Right. He's out running you, and you got dad right here. Do you feel a little bit of pressure from time to time? I'm gonna need a lot more seat time. That's, a lot more seat time. That's gonna be a big thing. That's where he's got the advantage so far. 
so far. <laughs> you ever notice that these two kind of like all the time? <laughs> like you go back. You should be here in a week. Sometimes I just gotta say stop. Stop. <laughs> before, <laughs> before the fists start flying, we stop. <laughs> but so, no, I mean, Al's, you know, he pretty much helped do most of the car. I mean, Corey built his own cage. Um, he built that all in. Um, Al taught him with the setup and, and uh, getting the motor put in and that sort of thing. You know, that's Al's really good at mechanical stuff like that. I mean, he's, he's really good and he remembers. Yeah. Me? I don't. Uh, I don't know. And he's got the patience to do it. I, I have no patience. I have no patience and no memory. <laughs> Boy, that was it. The race just last week here in Denison. Had my car already go at the end of the week. Took down the ground road for a test drive training, screwed up. Pulled the motor training out in five hours and stopped. Wow. <laughs> five hours? Can you imagine doing that in one of our cars? I mean, we can do that in like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, and that's taking our time. You gotta take axles and everything else out of these things to drop everything out. You know? The hardest part to do is is my trains in it. It's weird. When you work on these sport compacts and help them like, do you ever look back at your car and be like, thank God you're so open and it's easy to get. I look at, you know, I've helped some guys on hobby stocks before and my co-host who's not here, Jack Crawl, he used to race sport compacts and I, I go look at my mod I'm like, man, I can just roll up a, a, a stool to the right front or the left and I can change spark plugs. And I don't even have half of what you have for a body. I can't imagine working on these things. It's a tight fit. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I would have the patience. Uh, what's the best way to follow you guys on Facebook? You know, somebody wants to follow Stapleton Racing? Uh, I've actually been thinking about making a Stapleton Racing page, but I got Facebook and just Corey Stapleton. My brother's got Alex just, Stapleton yeah. and he's got one through Mike Stapleton. So. How, so they just follow you on, on Facebook? Yeah. All right. One last question. So it's been a big deal in Denison. This year, we got a full management team in place. What's your thoughts on that? I, I think it's, it can be a very good thing, you know, as, as long as no, fair. everybody puts in place and does what they say they're going to do. And that's the bottom line. You know, you say you're going to do this, you do that. You're right. You know, that's that's the way it is. If, if so-and-so's rough driving, make the call. You know, and if so-and-so else is making the rough driving, make the call. You know, just be fair and consistent in what you do and do it every single time. And I think they're going to get along just fine. So you guys, obviously you're going to race Denison. I mean, you could throw a rock from your shop to the track. <laughs> you're going to race Harlan week then, I would assume? Yeah. yeah. Um, any other races outside of Denison or Harlan that you're thinking about going to? Maybe Benoon? I might go to Super National. I, I, say, I saw a Super National sticker on the car. How about you, Mike? Super National, possibly? <laughs> possibly. I went two years ago and did very, very well. I spent a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go to what you spent money on, ladies. No, 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 no. It was all parts. <laughs> it was all parts. It was all parts. I had a lot of bad luck over there. But, you know, last year the car just wasn't there, so uh, there was no reason for me to even take my car, maybe. You, you pretty excited for this year? Yeah, I am. I mean, the we took the car out the other night. Um, the car seemed to get out the Cornwall, um, which it hadn't done for a year. Well, when you get when your wheelbase is off two inches, that might have something but to do with it. But we had the whole rear end rejig. We had the front end, the, all the geometry changed on both yep. sides of the front. And uh, um, Gary McNeely um, from uh, Eliminator Chassis, he helped me do the front end. And then uh, Tim Plowman, he come up and helped me set the dashing camera and uh, taught me a few things that I didn't know. And uh, took it out the first night and the car stuck and it uh, uh, landed the right rear and came in. Tires were all equally temperature, so it's definitely a, a swing in the right direction. Right. Now, for you two young bucks, you guys ever played sports in high school? I, I am not a sports guy. You're not a sports guy. <laughs> well, a lot of times you'll get. Uh, young men and women that play volleyball or football or baseball, there's life lessons that can be learned in those sports. You know, for two young guys, you know, on um, Slate and Dirt here, and there's a lot of young people watching YouTube, what is the number one lesson that you've learned in this sport of racing so far? Teamwork. 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 Well, you learned it. I don't know about him. <laughs> he, he's out with friends while you're working on the <laughs> no. So, you know, he's only learned teamwork. Give me something else other than teamwork. Teamwork's a big one. It's like we all kind of buckle down and stay out of trouble and stay in the shop. So, and then uh, just patience. So if you're the coach, 
Are they starters or are they bench warmers? <laughs> <laughs> no, they've been doing really well. They've been, they've been doing well. Well, there you go, folks. We got the Stapleton family out of Vail, Iowa. Uh, just follow Corey Stapleton, Alex Stapleton, and Mike Stapleton on Facebook. Um, Mr. Rookie over here, he's going to be doing a Stapleton race on Facebook. I got to give you crap. <laughs> so, tell you what, we'll be right back here in Slinging Dirt. You know, that's... I, this is the first interview that I did without you. And as I'm sitting there and I'm talking to Mike Stapleton and his son, <clears throat> all I can see is you, BJ, and your dad. Yeah, and, and I did get a chance to watch the video, you know, so I do know yep. what, what happened. And unfortunately, I couldn't be there because that would have been a great interview to be at. But our schedules just did not jive yep. that day. We were going opposite ends of the country. So uh, the Stapletons, it does totally mirror my whole family with my dad you driving, me, my son driving. And all be, we were all sport compacts, so we would, and we all have the same name, so we used to drive the announcers nuts because our car numbers were 43, 44, 45. You got Mitten Jack Prawl Jr., the third, and the fourth, all in the same class, running the same track. And it was hilarious. <laughs> and these guys are doing the same thing. Somebody tear a car up, everybody's got to bail and go help. Yep. Help fix it, get them back on. Because back then we were running for points championships, and we were always in the top five, so it was important to show up. and and keep your cars fixed and when I was talking to Mike I had asked the question how much of a help is it having the two boys you know <laughs> help on your car and the entire time he's talking all I'm doing is, is I'm seeing you in a way because BJ if it wasn't for BJ your son you might be up a crick some days yeah yeah, yeah. you know and is in BJ your son is is a hell of a racer probably one of the the hidden uh, talents not being shown on the track and when I see BJ away from the track he's all happy-go-lucky kind of a goofball I see BJ at the track working on your car and he is like he's all business oh he's all business no yeah. he's not a jerk or arrogant or no like, no he is, but, he but is he, all business yeah. he wants to make sure that car is right he wants to know what's going on with the car and it's kind of like with the Staplelands too where you know he lets his son drive his hobby stock well he has dro driven my sport yeah, mod I, I wanted to ask you about that when I asked Stapleton, so your son drives a hobby stock, so what was it like, and you know, go back and watch a video, he's like, oh, I'm like smoking cigarettes, I'm like, yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what was it like when you let BJ drive your mod? Uh, I let him hot lap it several times, I knew he couldn't get in too much trouble during hot laps because, you know, the track is pretty wet, he can't go too fast. But was you in that same state of mind, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was worse, I was giving him the pep top, you know, we went to practice at Eagle, and, and the track was dry slick which is my biggest fear you know anybody can drive on a tacky track yep. but dry slick well he loves the high line I'm more of a bottom feeder and I knew he was gonna do it I knew he was gonna creep up there creep up there and I told him to stay out of the high line because even the sprint cars were spinning out you know and by God he's getting faster and faster each lap he passes a couple guys and, he, and that line keeps creeping up and I knew damn well what was gonna happen and he looped that sucker in one and two and put it right into the fence Luckily, he just bent the bumper, you know, yep. he got it woed up enough, but it was enough that when he came back, he's like, I should have listened to you, Dad. You know, you always get that afterwards, but, you know, kids, he, he's a good driver, you know. Or if he just had the money, he'd be racing. I was going to ask you about his racing. You think we'll ever see him in a car again? Oh, absolutely. I, it, you know, he's a he's a new dad. Well, uh, I'm going to... He's just, gonna... just buying a house, you know. Yep, new He's dad. getting his priorities straight first and his life settled. He'll be back in a car, you know. He won't go back into a sport compact. He, he refuses to do that. You think he'll be driving your car at least one time? Racing at one time? You gonna let him race? Oh yeah, I told there him. There you I, go, BJ. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm asking I told, your dad. I told him, you know, yeah. you show me that, uh, you know, you're, you're invested in the car and in the team and doing everything, I'll let you run a race, you know. You know, it, it seems like Mike Stapleton is having the time of his life right now. He's running these races. He's a laid-back guy. He's got his sons helping him. I think he's having more fun now than what he was prior to his son's race. Oh, it is. It's a blast. Are you having more fun? Do you have more fun when you're at the track with BJ and then your personal bartender, John, versus <laughs> <laughs> if you ever <laughs> go to ID Speedway, go watch Jack Crawley. He fits right next to me. He's the only race car driver I know that walks around with a personal bartender. Uh, I don't know why you have that, but... 
do you have more fun having those guys at your side versus showing up at a track by yourself? And I won't go racing by myself. I never have. Um, to me, racing is fun. I mean, I, I don't think I could do it without those guys. I don't wouldn't want to do it. Uh, you know, BJ's head right now is going. Ooh. Well, it's 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 just a <laughs> you know. To me, it's fun to share that yeah. with everybody, not to... What fun is it to go to the track, race, come home, say, hey, I finished 12th, honey, and then go to bed. You know, there's no story. I do it all the time. Well... Well, my wife snores, so she probably doesn't <laughs> hear me anyways. But, you know, to me, it's a family thing. That's how it started for yeah. us, was a family thing. We Same could, here. You know, friends, family, you know... Our wives started out going to the track with us all the time, and of course the way the wives now they choose when they want to go to the track, still feeling like they have. To oh go. yeah, you know we don't so, want to get the dirt and that you know, that you know so, eight inch tall bangs and that yeah. fancy hair. But I, I give full credit to those wives out there that go every week and they just eat and breathe this stuff. But not all girls are cut out to eat and breathe racing as much as as we do it no. too. And we we do a lot. I mean between with the show and the racing and stuff. It's a lot of it, it. Yeah, it is. They're the unsung heroes of the sport. Uh, so I tell you what, uh, sometime get out to uh, Crawford County Speedway on Friday nights, uh, Shelby County Speedway on a Saturday night, and go meet the Stapleton family. You won't be disappointed. Some of the nicest people, down-to-earth people that you'll ever meet. So uh, with, without further ado, I said it again, we're going to go to a sponsor break. we got some bills to pay, so stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Slingin' Dirt. Hi, my name is Alex Stapleton, driver of the number seven I, uh, IMCA Sport Compact, and you're watching Slingin' Dirt. Joe's Karting is the Metro's fastest indoor karting facility. Come to Joe's to experience speed. Join the competition and ride the fastest indoor track around. Our professionally designed indoor karting track is perfect for arrive and drive racing, race classes, and racing competitions. We offer affordable pricing options, membership packages, event outings, and so much more. Stop in today to get registered for your next race, and don't forget to like us on Facebook for deals, giveaways, and more. Visit us online at joeskarting.com. Hey, welcome back to Sling and Dirt. Today, our tech tip we're going to talk about is basically lug nuts. Um, everybody out there pretty much has lug nuts on their cars, or they're supposed it, it, to. Yeah, yeah, it's a kind of a and, requirement. And we all, I, I've noticed that there's some things that people do differently. Um, most people either have a gun or some sort of a lug wrench. And they both have advantages and disadvantages. Now we use the lug gun because it puts them puts the bolts on tight, takes them off easy. Um, you guys use a use a gun, but sometimes these batteries die and you just got to screw. So then you go to the good old Speedway lug wrench, which these are spinner wrenches. They they spin, make it easy. That's what those are for. But you also, if you notice, they're not the best made. So when you, if you get lug nuts on there real tight, you can actually, the, the chrome is broken off because we're twisting the shaft. But in an emergency, these work good. I always, thought, good when you, I always thought when you went racing, you always use it as a racer's cross. You're like, oh my God, I'm going to race some fast people. Yeah, but. sometimes, you know, take whatever advantage you can get. Now here's something that is a tip that I have found personally. And if you notice, my socket is orange colored. If you're using a chrome socket on your impact gun, get rid of it and get an actual impact socket because those chrome sockets are not made for that. And they no. can crack and shatter, put your eye out, hurt somebody. So get you, yourself an impact socket. And to the reason it's orange is these impact sockets are normally black in color. And when you're walking around the pits or your pit crew is, I'm usually not doing this part of the job. But if you notice there's a, a, a detent ball here in a hole. Well, your crew will go like this and they'll stick it on the wrong way and these things fall off on the ground and that's the reason for painting them orange because with all the brown dirt and stuff, I bet you I find at least two of these a year laying on oh, the ground. Oh, at least. I think we got like a half a dozen of these. The one thing I want to add to this, Jack, and I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Now, boy, this one's been around the track a, a little while. When it's a chrome socket, right here in the corners where the square is, it'll get really rounded. And so what happens is that as you're walking around with your impact and it's a chrome socket, once again, it'll just drop. And even a chrome socket, if it drops on the ground and it's real just dry dirt and there's silt and there's dirt crumbles, it can actually get buried into the dirt and you'll lose it. 
you know, and even the chrome socket's a good chrome socket, it's still gonna put you back, you know, 10, 15 bucks. Uh, Jack's absolutely right. You wanna go with these black sockets. You know, I never thought about that painting it that bright. Yeah. Yeah, you can't lose it. No, it's just, if you, you drop it and you're like, oh crap, where'd the socket go? It sticks out like a sore thumb, and that's why we paint ours orange, because we've lost a couple, we found a few, and then we started painting them orange. You know, another good thing uh, to go with this is take your lug nuts and actually paint them. You know, paint them fluorescent yellow, fluorescent orange, paint them whatever color you want. You know, we have a black tablecloth here. We got a black lug nut, and if you put that right there, now you might see the lug nut because of the light reflecting off the lug nut, but imagine this is, you know, dirt, and this gets stepped on by a, a boot or something around the car, and you're cut, you know, Jack Crawl, this would never happen to Jack, but if Jack had a flat tire, he comes in the pits, they're trying to change the tire under a yellow so he can get back out there in the eight feature. Well, if they're stepping on this, driving this into the dirt, they can't see the lug nuts. So paint the lug nuts, you know, uh, uh, white, a bright white, fluorescent yellow, orange, red, whatever, a bright color so you can easily identify them. Now, here's, a, here's another thing, and I, this is something I noticed that you guys do that I don't do. And this is another one of those Jack versus Buddy tech tips. You put your nuts on flat side in. Nope, nope, they're all... Yours are coned? Mine because I know you better check them then because I know no, it's mine are coned on both sides. Are they? Yep. Okay. As I say, I have seen people do that, put them on flat side. There is a coned edge, it's beveled, and the reason that it's beveled, it helps tighten it down and center it, it into goes, the rim. It goes right into the hole on the rim. So And it keeps the rim centered and it also helps tighten down the nuts. So always make sure that you get the cone side down. I mean that's pretty basic one on one mechanics, but you know, yep. I, I have seen people run them backwards. Absolutely. I don't know why. Um, also, I'm going to go one step farther on this, uh, not to get too far away from all this. If you're going to be working on the tires on your car, for the love of God and all that's holy on this green earth, put jack stands under the car. Absolutely. We talk about safety all the time. All the time. I see too many guys, they'll jack up, you know, they'll try, they think we're in cup racing for some reason, and they'll put the jack halfway in the middle of the car thinking they can jack up the whole car. Well, our rear ends, especially in the mods and the late models, <laughs> uh, they drop a lot more than a cup car does. So when they're jacking the car up, that rear end drops, and yeah, you can get to the tire easier, but they don't put a jack stand underneath the car, and they crawl up underneath the car, and all it takes is your legs to hit the jack Somebody or something, and the car, the car will and... fall off the jack, and it can potentially kill you. So anytime you jack up the car to do whatever, you know, now granted, during the yellow, when you're changing a flat tire or something, that's one thing, but even when you're prepping tires or grinding tires or whatever, when the jack's under the car, you always put jack stands. That's one thing I want to add. Yeah, and the other thing is too, is you know, you see guys that are racing, your adrenaline's flowing, you get a flat, you know, you get that from the flag man and you know. That's that not him telling you a good job. job. No, <laughs> you know, you go in, you get a tire, you're excited, be careful in the pits. I mean, I've seen guys come flying through those oh, pits yeah. and yeah. you know, there, there is not horns on those cars, you know. Some of the spectators down there don't see them. But the other thing is, is I don't think I've ever seen a race where a racer has came in on a caution with a flat tire, gone back out and won the race. They finished well, or you know, top three, top four, depending on how early in the race the flat happens. Right. But your chances of winning the race are very slim. So keep that in mind as you're going through the pits and other people's safety. Yeah, we all want to win, but hey, you know, just not be at the expense of somebody's life. Right. So. So there you go, folks. That's our tech tip of the week. And if you have a tech tip you want to send us, you know, go ahead and get on the website, email us, and let us know. You know, Facebook, whatever. You, way we're you not hard to find. Yeah, we're, if we're not at the track, whatever. You know, grab grab Buddy by the scruff of the neck and maybe show him something that'll make him faster. So there you go, folks. There's our tech tip of the week. Tech tip of the week. We'll be right back here on Slinging Dirt. I'm Corey Stapleton, driving the number eight IMC Sport Compact and you're watching Slander. Would you like to see your ad right here on Slinger Dirt TV? You need money, we need money. So if you want to sponsor an ad on Slinger Dirt TV, email me at buddyj at joescarding.com. It's B-U-D-D-Y letter J at joescarding.com. Carding with a K. Gain some traction, become a winner by putting your sponsorship right here. Welcome back to Slingin' Dirt TV. Uh, you know, we were just talking during break. We have the all too familiar Songer Says coming up. Uh, when I do the Songer Says, 
oh, good old boy Jamie, he'll send me four or five of them. I'll watch four or five of them in about 10, 15 minutes, and then I send them all to the producing team here at Creative Element, uh, the ones that produce the show. I don't really dwell on them, because that way, when you see the Songer Says, I'm actually seeing the Songer Says in, the, in its entire in moment, yeah. So a lot of times we won't know, when we tell you we don't know what Songer's talking about, we don't, we don't know. know. <laughs> so without uh, further ado, <laughs> it's our new drinking game, by the way. Without further ado, <laughs> here we go with Songer Song Says. Says. Today's subject on Songer Says is people who borrow stuff and bring it back in bad condition or people who borrow money to race and evidently can't seem to find a time frame of paying it back. If you borrow money from me and you need it to go racing and you race one week and then you race the second week and then you race the third week and I ain't got my money back, you're worthless. Worthless, worthless, worthless. You should be racing a tricycle because obviously it's the only thing you can flip and afford. Race car drivers by far are the most irresponsible financially people I've ever met in my life. If you can't afford to race, don't race. None of us can really afford it, but at least make it somehow passable or that you could somehow get through the week. But constantly borrowing money or parts or saying, hey, I'll pay you back, dude, that just creates rival enemies, not rivalries, but enemies. So why would you want an enemy on the track? If you can't afford to part to buy it and you borrow it and you've done pissed off three other people and they wreck you, now you owe for a part, plus now you gotta try and figure out how to get another part. So you're an idiot. Second off, if you borrow something, bring it back in a timely manner. And sure as shit, don't bring it back with the wrong parts on it or in twice the condition, worst condition that you borrowed it in. People loan you stuff because they trust that you will take care of it and you will bring it back. I don't loan tires because I can't get a good tire back. That's common sense. If I loan you a gear, I don't expect it to come back with a different yoke on it or dirt down in the gears or teeth missing off the gear or the pinion broke. Or if you borrow a carburetor, I expect that carburetor back. I got a neat way of marking carburetors and if you borrow it and I get your crappy carburetor back, I don't need to run it to figure it out. I can look at certain things and know it's not my carburetor. Then you're not borrowing nothing again. These people who constantly borrow stuff. I mean, it's all fine and dandy. I like helping people out. I've been loaned out a lot of stuff. It's coming to an end shortly because quite frankly, race car drivers don't understand the fact of a favor is a favor. And if you ever want it returned, you should do it, or do it as a good faith and bring it back in good faith and good shape. But most of you jackasses don't get that. So if you're gonna borrow a part, bring it back in the same shape or better than it left. Yeah, Songer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, he's been recorded on Facebook now. Oh, his, I know it. You yeah. know, you can get, you can agree with Songer, you can disagree with Songer. Uh, in my opinion, He's been spot on with everything he's talked about. Yeah. Now the Hillary Clinton one was a little rough, but uh, we're not going to go into that. If you want to see, go to Jamie Sommer's personal Facebook page, look through the videos, find the Hillary Clinton one if you want a good laugh. Yeah, he. Uh, I have to admit, he he, he he's kind of like the Rush Limbaugh of dirt track, or yeah, you know, or how Glenn Beck or whoever. He <laughs> Glenn has Beck. A, he, he has a. Uh, he looks kind of like Glenn Beck, doesn't he? He puts some. Dexter glasses on. You know, if you're to age Jamie Songer 20 years, he lost about 30 pounds <laughs> and he had a horseshoe hairdo, he'd almost look like Bill O'Reilly. There you go. But, you know, he's got, there's truth to what he says and there's some humor to what he says. So, you know what? More power to the guy. More power to the guy. I'm, he's, glad, he's, I'm glad to have him yeah. on our team. Oh, yeah. So, tell you what, without further ado, there it is again. Yeah. Man, that is going to be our new term. <laughs> We're gonna go straight into the fan of the week. The fan, whoa. Fastball. Man, I haven't seen anything that fast in a long time. <laughs> so what do we got here? Oh, well, we got yeah, another Dylan Smith. Smith. The o Osceola Rocket out of Osceola, Nebraska. The fan of the week, Angel Richards. She's my angel, my <laughs> darling. No. 
I was oh. going to say stick to racing, but you stink, yeah. you stink at that too. So. so Angel's got a really good, she's out of Creston, Iowa. Uh, she likes to go to Adams County Speedway out of Corning, Iowa. What class do you find the most interesting to watch and why? Now, okay, we, she said watch. Watch. Okay. Believe it or not, for me, it's not the sport lines. Not no, sport monitor. No. I get to watch the races when I'm behind the wheel. Yeah, that's true. You know, now I like to watch the sport mods to see what the, the fast guys are doing. Uh, honestly, and we were talking about this in my shop the other day, me and Fred. I actually like watching the IMC stock car guys. Yeah, I was going to say, for me, it's to, to watch. It's the, the, the hobby stock sport cars or the compacts, the fendered cars. Yeah. You know what? Because they get to beat and they bang, you know. Uh, we, our, ours, when we beat and bang, it's not a good thing. These guys, they rub, they race. It's it's grassroots racing, and that's what it's all about. And that's the yep. beauty of those type of cars. You know? We have, in the modifieds, the competition in the modifieds in some ways is really close. Well, it's really close in all classes. Um, the late models, I don't get to watch too many late model races, mm -hmm. but we don't, we don't have a lot of late model races tracks around here. No. We have a few, but not a lot. Uh, you go to ID Speedway, they got what they call the Pro-Am class where the IMC stock cars can run with their Pro-Ams. Uh, you go to Harlan, you go to Denison, you go to Stewart, you got the stock cars and the stock, the IMC stock cars and the IMC hobby stocks. The IMC hobby stocks, you know, some of the guys to watch, uh, Chris and Corey Madden, I think it is. Uh, you got Willie Ransom, you've got Shannon Anderson. Everybody knows who Shannon Anderson sure. is in racing. Um, in the stock cars, you got Mike Nichols. Everybody knows who Mike Nichols and Jeff Anderson is. Uh, there, there's just so much talent in the stock car class. And I really like watching how they get those cars to work. In, in the tracks that I've been to, especially a track that has the IMCA stock cars, the hobby stocks are an amazing class to watch. But the IMCA stock cars, to me, that is truly your, your almost, like watching Cup Series drivers on dirt. Mm -hmm. They get those things three wheel like a modified or a three. Yeah, that's what I was gonna, I was just gonna say, you know, I mean, I remember back when we first started racing, you know, the hobby stocks and, and stuff like that, you never saw guys lifting left front tires mm -hmm. off the ground. And whatever technology they've changed or they're doing, those things are three wheel and twisting frames. It's just a crazy the, the amount of travel they get out of those cars. The one thing, I, I think I give the nod to stock cars over the hobby stocks, for the simple fact, in the stock, in the hobby stocks, you still see quite a few wrecks and yells. Nothing like the sport mods. Oh dear lord, <laughs> the sport mods. Yeah, wow. Um, in the we, we, they are, now we we ought to be considered like the Mad Max class of dirt track racing in the sport mods. Man, we can have a lot of wrecks and fender benders and whatnot. But anyways, back to the stock cars. You don't see a lot of four or five car pilot <clears throat> in the stock cars. You'll see. The stock cars running four or five wide a lot. Oh yeah, that's one thing you do see. You do see that in the stock cars a lot. Now you'll start, you'll see that in the hobby stocks, but I give the nod to the stock cars simply because the hobby stocks have a few more cautions and wrecks. Not not a lot, but a few more than the stock cars. But the stock cars, I mean, there's been some incredible talent that could go a long, long ways in this sport. Uh, a lot of times when I hear of a, a driver from the stock cars wanting to go late model or modified, I'm like, no, 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 stay in the stock cars, please. You're amazing to watch there. You yeah. know, and those guys have legions of fans that are just foaming at the mouth to watch that class. Well, and that's, you know, that's where racing, dirt track yeah. racing started. That's grassroots, and that's, if you ever notice, you don't see a lot of hobby stock sport or, or you know, fender class cars guys going up to the mods. They like to stay where they're at. They yep. like those fenders. They like and, what and they they're seem, doing. They seem like... And they're good at it. They're good at it. You know, one one guy, if I remember right, Jason Cole out of Missouri Valley, uh, we're going to be trying to interview him here in the next few weeks. He was in a B-Mod. For you, I, and I'm, I'm going back some years here. If I remember right, he was in a hobby, went to a B-Mod, ran a B-Mod, sport mod, for a couple, two, three years went back to a hobby, was much faster in the hobby. He drives the blue number 27 mm -hmm. out at Eagle Raceway right. and been out to ID, Harlan, Denison, all that. Uh, run up, won a lot of races. He is having so much fun. I think too many people in the sport take this too serious. Have fun. Well, I, you know, I, I was I, a guy once told me, if you're out here not trying to win a race, you're wasting my time. Don't be in the don't don't be a driver. If you don't want to win, you have no business being a driver. This is 
this is a job. And I got to thinking about that. I'm like, anybody that's successful in life, and no matter what genre of business or, or whatever in their life, when you have fun at something, you usually succeed at that something. Sure. You know, so first and foremost, have fun, and that's what I see in the stock cars. These guys are having so much fun. Now, they, yeah, there's still some squab squabbling and some bickering and stuff like that, but I tell you what, they have so much respect for each other. It, well, it's nice to see that. It, it is, and, you know, back to the grassroots thing, I mean, that's where NASCAR came from, That you know, the stock cars. You know, those guys going around the beach at Daytona racing. You know, you get guys with cars, they're going to race. Um, you, you can take a look at, if you used to take the stock cars, hobby stocks, you know, sport comp fender cars, and you drew a line, it's kind of like NASCAR versus Indy cars. Our cars are highly technical, they look different, yep. you know, aerodynamics matter, you know, things like that. And that's that dividing line between the, you know, the purest dirt tracker and then the highly technical dirt tracker that's moved on, you know, costs a lot more to do. Although these hobby stock and, and uh, stock car guys put a lot of money in their cars, oh, don't get me wrong. Oh lord! You don't get me wow. wrong. So you know, to answer your question, fendered cars are my favorite to watch, and I think are, are yours too. Yeah, and that's specifically because, for me, it's the stock cars followed by the hobby stock. You know, yeah, and that's you know that's where racing started. So you know, we're gonna wrap this show up, buddy. I think we've jabbered on long enough, and enough further adieus. And I'll tell you what. So I tell you what. Stay tuned. We'll be back next week with another. Uh, Show Sling and Dirt.